What is this? One day, I was preparing dinner in the kitchen as usual. Suddenly, my daughter made a noise that I couldn't understand. Mom! Oh no! This can't be! I turned off the pot and went to the dining table where my daughter was sitting. What the hell is this? To my surprise, there was a wiretap. Who did this and for what purpose? My name is Gwen, a 37 year old housewife. I live with my husband Oscar and my daughter Lynn. Mom, come on, hurry up! Okay, okay, wait a second. My daughter is 10 year old elementary schooler. She's into swimming and never misses her lessons every week. I am so happy to see her grow up to be a kind and cheerful girl. My daughter, my husband, and I, three of us are getting along very well and live happily together. But we are not completely free from problems. Not because of any one of us, but because of my husband's mother. I mean my mother in law. My in laws live about a 15 minute walk from our house. My mother in law loves her son, my husband, very much. My mother in law is uncomfortable without her son by her side. She once asked us when we were going to move in together. She was extremely insistent, but I wanted to spend with just the three of us. So, I firmly refused to move in with her. And my husband had enough of my mother-in-law's over-interference. He told his mother that he couldn't live with her. But my mother-in-law didn't give up easily and insisted on moving in with us several times. In the end, to convince my mother-in-law, we agreed to move into a place within walking distance of my mother-in-law's house. My mother-in-law still wasn't convinced, but my father-in-law got her on board. For the time being, the living together fuss was settled. The three of us were able to keep our family life together. However, my mother-in-law still persisted me on a regular basis. We always had to go to mother-in-law's house during the holiday season because it was so close to our house. Even though my husband and I kept our distance from her and didn't want to see her, my mother-in-law used the neighbors to put pressure on us. Why don't you take care of your mother? Your wife is not good. Your mother is hurting. She went through a lot of pain to give birth to you. And if you avoid her, she'll miss you. Besides, you're the eldest son. It's your duty to take care of your parents. That's how we were attacked by our neighbors. We end up having to go to my in-law's house to show up each time. I wish my mother-in-law was as nice to me as she is to her son. But she loves him very much and sees me as the enemy. That's why she always picks on me every time I see her. Gwen! You're feeding Oscar such bad food. I can't believe it. I feel sorry for Oscar. I wish I could cook for him every day. My mother-in-law said such terrible things to me. Mom, what are things to say? Stop it. My husband defends me every time. But my mother-in-law is persistent nuisance. How can it be that you've been married for two years and still haven't had a baby? Gwen, I think you might be infertile. I was just astonished when my mother-in-law said something like that to me. Even my husband's eyes widened in anger. Mom, knock it off. Enough. We're not in a big hurry yet. Besides, a child is a gift. Don't assume that Gwen is infertile based on your feelings. Why is it Gwen's fault? It's also possible that I'm infertile. When my husband said that, my father-in-law joined him in defending me. Oscar is right. We don't know who caused it or anything like that. You can't decide when to be blessed with a baby. 
Don't look down on Gwen just because you happen to have a baby early. My mother-in-law finally calmed down after my husband and my father-in-law got talked to her. But even then, when things had cooled off, she would start to bully me again. I was pretty much overwhelmed by the repetition. Then my daughter was born. My father-in-law was very happy about the birth of his first granddaughter. I thought that my mother-in-law would calm down a little now that she had a grandchild, but she reacted differently than I expected. What? It's not a boy? Are you kidding me? It's your duty to give birth to a boy since you married to the eldest son. You've been picking on me, asking for a grandchild for all these times. But when a child is born, she complains that it's not a boy. What kind of nerve does this person have? My my husband and father-in-law were both dismayed at how far she had come. In the end, she just doesn't like everything about me. Then, when my daughter grew up. My mother-in-law hardly loved her at all. My daughter also felt, as a child, that she was not well liked by her grandmother. Therefore, she was only attached to her grandfather. Seeing my daughter like that made my mother-in-law angry, and she began to treat my daughter as well as me badly. Even though she's Oscar's child, she's not of good character. I wonder if she only inherited Gwen's bad genes, or maybe you were not Oscar's child to begin with. That does it. I snapped at my mother-in-law for saying that. Please, don't make such accusations. She is Oscar's and mine. What kind of nerve do you have to say that? Oh, you were upset like that. Cause you were lying, right? You slut! Stop it! You've gone too far. I'm leaving. My father-in-law had just gone shopping, and my husband was in the other room on the work phone. I got my daughter ready to leave, went to the door, and put on her shoes. When my husband noticed we were leaving, he was surprised and came to the door. What's going on? What's the matter with you guys? I am sick and tired of your mother's horrible attitude. What? Did Mom say something again? She started asking if Lin is really yours. What? She said what? Seriously? My husband's face turned red, and he called out to my mother-in-law. Mom, are you for real? How can you say such a thing? When my husband yelled at her, she didn't seem offended. I just said what I thought. Oscar and Lin don't look alike. You're kidding me. We're leaving. We'll never come here again. My husband got his stuff and put on his shoes, and we left my in-laws and went home. That was ugly. How insane is she? Does she know any morals? My daughter is just entering her sensitive period. It's terrible that my mother-in-law would say such disgusting things to plant negative things in her head. After we got home, my husband got a call from my father-in-law asking why we left. When my husband explained the situation, his father was appalled. He said he would give my mother-in-law a stern talking to. But to my surprise, no matter how angry my husband and father-in-law got, my mother-in-law never gave up on bullying me. I'm sure she will continue to annoy me and my daughter in every way she can. Then my husband said to me, "Let's not go to my parents anymore." What? Because every time we go there, you got sick of it, right? But. Then again, your mother will get into trouble with the neighbors, and they'll keep telling us to be good to her. Then ignore them. The neighbors are just strangers, you know. Yeah, that's true. I was reassured when my husband said that. 
my mother-in-law is very good at taking in the neighbors. But just like my husband said, we just need to ignore them. We used to feel like we were doing something wrong every time one of the neighbors accused us of something. But now, I don't care what the outside world says. We are united as a family. After that, we stopped visiting my parents in Lo's house. My mother-in-law had contacted my husband to ask him why he didn't come. I don't know how she could contact him like that in the first place. Do you not understand that you are the cause of this? Or do you just want to see your son even though you know you are doing the worst possible thing? Well, either way, we will never go to my parents-in-law's house again. We won't even let my mother-in-law come to our place. For sure, when we were living like that, the neighbors started meddling and saying all kinds of things to us. But I didn't pay any attention to them anymore. Thank you for your concern. I thanked them politely and pretended to listen to them. Thanks to this, I was able to live very peacefully for a while. My daughter doesn't have to see her mean grandmother anymore, and she seems to be happy every day. I wish we had disassociated ourselves from my mother-in-law earlier. By the way, my father-in-law does nothing wrong. So sometimes we go out for dinner with him without my mother-in-law's knowledge. My daughter misses her grandfather and enjoys having dinner with him. We were spending happy days like that. But then, something unexpected happened. Huh? What is this? One day, I was preparing dinner in the kitchen as usual. Suddenly, my daughter made a startled noise. I was wondering what she was doing, but I was in the middle of cooking and couldn't take my hands off it. I decided to ask her later. Well, I can't get it off. My daughter was still saying something, and suddenly she started to sound surprised. Mommy, what's this? What? What's going on, honey? Come see this, hurry! I'm putting the pot on the fire. Just come, please. Oh my gosh, what's up with you? I turned off the fire and went to the dining table. What? What the hell is this? To my surprise, there was a wiretap. Who did this? And for what purpose? Mom! Oh no! This can't be! I quickly covered my daughter's mouth and typed a text on my phone. Don't say anything. We don't know who might be listening. She nodded silently. There might be other wiretaps in the house. I went outside and called the police. And when the police checked the house, I learned a startling fact. One under the dining room table, and one in my and my husband's bedroom, and one was in my daughter's room. We were horrified. We didn't know how long it had been going on. But someone had been listening in on our conversations at home. According to the police, the locations of the devices suggested that it was an amateur job. They said that now that all the wiretaps have been removed, a person might come back to check on us. The police told us to be very careful. They also told us that they would step up patrols in the neighborhood. My husband had just gone on a business trip that day and would not be back. The, but once we found the bugs, it was not safe for my daughter and me to be alone in the house. So my daughter and I decided to stay at my parents' house until my husband came back from his business trip. I don't want to send a message or call my husband who is at work on a business trip and tell him that the house was bugged. It might make him anxious and he might not be able to concentrate on his work. I decided to report it to my husband when he came home. My parents were extremely worried when they heard that the house had been bugged. 
and they were angry that anyone who would do such a lousy thing should be cut as soon as possible. My daughter is also very upset and scared. Mommy, I forgot my stuffed bunny. Oh, you did. She nodded her head as if she was about to cry. She always sleeps with a big stuffed rabbit as a pillow. In her current frightened state, she would never be able to sleep without that stuffed animal. Then my father said we should go and get it for her. Then I'll go with you. Thanks, Dad. And my father and I went to the house together. There might be a person in doubt wandering around. So my father and I cautiously entered the house and took the stuffed animal from my daughter's room. Then suddenly, we heard the front door unlock. My father and I were startled, but covered our mouth with our hands to keep from making a sound. We heard someone walking down the hallway. My heart was racing, and I thought I was going to lose it. My father stared at the entrance to my daughter's room. Protecting me, the footsteps pass through her room and disappear into the living room. Perhaps the person is coming to retrieve the listening device from the dining room table. My father and I looked at each other and quickly prepared to flee. The person is looking for the bug now, and we need to get out while we still can. My father quietly opens the door and looks at the dining room. What? Oh my God! My father sounded surprised. I whispered angrily at him for speaking in a normal voice. Hey, Dad! Don't make a sound. He turned to me and said, "It's Oscar." What? I was so surprised that I opened the door and looked toward the living room, and there was my husband checking under the dining table. I didn't understand what was going on. Why was my husband at home when he was supposed to be on a business trip, and he is checking the place where the bug was found? What are you doing? When I talked to him, he started shaking. Then he looked at me in surprise and said, "Gwen, what are you doing here?" That's my question. I thought you were on a business trip. What's going on here, Oscar? Oh, no! It's just that my husband was getting upset when we questioned him. Then the front door opened, and we heard a high-pitched, shrill voice. Oscar, did you recover the listening device? The voice was my mother-in-law. Mom, hey! It was only after my husband alerted her to our presence. That she recognized us. Gwen, why? I gradually began to understand the situation. Oscar, you did this with your mother. What in the world do you mean by bugging the house? When I said this, my husband seemed to give in and began to tell me everything. Because you are having an affair, aren't you? What? That's what the neighbors said. They had seen you walking around with some guy. Others said they've seen you let him into her house during the day. Some said they saw you and Ling go into a restaurant together. Huh? What's that? I had no idea of any of this. That's how I got reports of your affair from various people, one after another. So I started to think you were being unfaithful. Also, Mom said Ling and I are not alike. So I talked to my mom about it. She told me to bug the house and get evidence of the affair. So I did it. And the day I said I was going on a business trip, the wiretap suddenly stopped transmitting. I thought something might be up with this, so I rushed over to retrieve it. I got a hard blow on the head, like I had been knocked up and almost fell over. Unbelievable! You're saying you did this because you believed a hoax like that? 
But when you repeatedly told something like that, you would believe it, wouldn't you? Don't be ridiculous. Do you really think I would do such a thing? Are you saying that Lin and I have been deceiving you? If you can't trust us, why don't you just hire a private detective to investigate us? And if you doubt that your daughter is not yours, why don't you just do a DNA test or something? When I yelled at him, he finally seemed to realize his mistake. Oh no, I'm sorry. I was wrong. I did the terrible things to you too. It's too late to apologize. I can't do this anymore. Let's get a divorce. No, Gwen, please. I was wrong. We're family, right? Let's live together as a family. Again. That's enough. I'm so disappointed in you. I can't stay married to someone who easily believes rumors like that. When I said that, my mother-in-law interrupted me. Oscar, aren't you glad you got rid of this woman? I'm sure she's having an affair, even if she's hiding it. You should get rid of this woman and her daughter once and for all and find someone new. My mother-in-law attacks me even in a situation like this. Then, my father stood in front of her. I wonder why did the neighbors have to lie like that? Did someone make them say it? What do you think? My father stared at my mother-in-law. My mother-in-law flinched for a moment and said, I don't know. Why should I know? Then my father continued. He seemed to be sickened that my mother-in-law was acting like she didn't know anything about it. I'm sure this kind of thing can be considered a libel lawsuit, right? My daughter can sue the neighbors. That's right, Gwen. Because of the neighbor's rumor, you and Oscar had to break up. Okay. Shall we immediately go around telling the neighbors that we are going to sue them now? When my father said that, my mother-in-law instantly started panicking. That's a, that's a bit too much, don't you think? I'm sure the neighbors were joking. Well, if it was a joke, it's even worse. They need to be brought to justice and pay for it. What? Why? You can't do that. Why not? My daughter is being accused of being unfaithful. Of making up facts that never happened. People who twist facts like that should be punished. Gwen, let's go. My father says so. I nodded, put on my shoes, and started to go outside. Then my mother-in-law started to say with tears in her eyes, It's me! I told our neighbors to tell my son false information. Mother-in-law suddenly gets down on her knees. Is that true? I took off my shoes and went back into the hallway to ask my mother-in-law. Yes, I thought that if Oscar divorced you for having an affair, he would come back to her house. When my mother-in-law said this, my husband's eyes widened and he got angry. Mom, you've got to be kidding me. What are you doing? Don't you feel ashamed of doing this? Get out of our sight already! Don't ever show your face again! My husband snapped and said so. But I looked him in the eye and said, Can you correct me on the our part? Lin and I have nothing to do with you anymore. What are you talking about? You know I had nothing to do with it. It's all mom. No, you're the one who bugged the house. I don't trust you anymore. I swear to God, I'm going to divorce you. I said that and left the house with my father. We're both slumped on the floor, their faces pale. I then went to my lawyers and asked for a divorce. Then I offered a deal to our neighbors. In exchange for not suing them for defamation, I told them to tell me every detail of what my mother-in-law had asked them to do. 
The neighbors all confessed that my mother-in-law had instructed them to do so, and with that, it was accepted as fact that my husband had bugged the house. Therefore, I, I am now entitled to alimony as well as child support. My mother-in-law told me that my father-in-law gave her a divorce and kicked her out of the house. She tried to cling on to her son, my ex-husband, but there was no way he would forgive her for causing the divorce in the first place. My ex-mother-in-law was cut off from my ex-husband. Rumor has it that my ex-mother-in-law is living alone in her apartment and working part-time to make ends meet. I, on the other hand, got a new job and started working full-time. Now I live at home and my parents are helping me to take care of my daughter. She seemed to have gotten over her father. She is now putting a lot of effort into swimming, which she has been doing for a long time. I will continue to work hard and live my life, while taking care of my daughter first and foremost.